Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A mukbang, which I've never done before, but I kind of thought it was about time that I did a little bit of a get to know you kind of thing. So that is what we're doing today. Um, the only thing is it's not going to be with takeaway food because I'm doing a little bit of a calorie deficit thing at the moment. So I made my lunch. It's pretty healthy but I'm gonna be eating all of this while I sit here and chat with you guys. So I've got a bowl of berries. These are like blackberries and blueberries as a little, a little sweet treat. I made a salad bowl. So this has got like rice, quinoa, some lettuce, red onion, tomato, avocado, and tuna. And then I got some water and I've got this organic kombucha in the ginger lemon flavor from Remedy, which is delicious. Oh, it didn't give me that like satisfying sound. Anyway, so this is one of my favorite flavors from this brand, actually. I used to like the pink lemonade, but I think this one is my new favorite. So what I've done is I found a bunch of questions and I'm just gonna roll with it and answer them. So it kind of starts with like, a few basic questions and then we'll just get into some really fun ones. <sighs> All right, let's do it. So I'm Emma. If you don't know, you obviously do because you can see it down below, but my name is Emma. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and I started this channel last year when we were in lockdown. And honestly, I wanted to have a YouTube channel for years, but I literally just never got around to it. I actually have no idea why. I think it's just, I was so busy with work and traveling and because I guess all of that stuff stopped last year, it was like that first chance to like, I don't know, have a think about other streams of income or thinking about just like creative ideas. And I had so much time in my hands. So I just started making videos and here we are. So, do you, did you do any study? Um, yes. Mmm. I also put sushi ginger in here. It's so good. Um, I am an architect, so I did a four year bachelor's and a one year master's. And so I have like a master's of architecture and a bachelor of design. And then after uni, I should do like another two years of filling out a logbook and then go and do an exam and all sorts of stuff to get registered. And now I'm an architect. What is your channel about? Well, if you're new here, please subscribe. I would love to have you join, but it's pretty much like lifestyle design, uh, self-development, lots of hauls and fun things like that, decorating around your home organizing, all that kind of stuff. So that is pretty much all of the videos you will find here. Do you hope to get famous one day? Mm, no, <laughs> like in a way, I think it's like, you know, cool to build up an audience and like have a really nice following. And obviously I love all of you guys that follow me, but I kind of really love my anonymity. Like, you know, when you wanna go down to the shops in like, the shittiest pajamas and clothing and just kind of wander around Woolworths or whatever and just look like meh no one knows who I am doesn't matter no one's gonna snapchat it or put it on Instagram so I feel like that is something that I wouldn't want to give up and I really do feel sorry for people that are getting snapped in those kind of unflattering paparazzi photos not a good time when is your birthday my birthday is in August, so that makes me a Leo if you're into star sign kind of stuff. Um, I'm definitely the most Leo-ish Leo out there. I'm very loyal, very loud, <laughs> I like attention, I like the spotlight, but yeah, I'm, um, I'm a lot of those qualities of that star sign, so I guess they got it right. What is your lucky number? Um, this is a very generic answer, but my lucky number is seven. And I know this is like so many people's lucky number because I don't know why, I don't exactly know where that came from, but it was actually my granddad's lucky number. And whenever he used to do any bets or like buy a lotto ticket or something like that, he would always be like, make sure you include the number seven. So 
I just kind of took it from there. So that is my lucky number as well. Where are you from? Okay, I actually grew up in Sydney. So I lived in Sydney till I was about 14. And we always used to holiday up on the Gold Coast quite a lot. And then my parents eventually just started looking at land when we went up on holidays once. And all of a sudden we just kind of moved to Queensland. So yeah, I um, started, I think I was just starting high school around that time. So yeah, I did high school and university up there. And it was just a little bit quiet, especially in my industry. And I just didn't really feel like I fit in up there, I think. Um, I didn't really have a good solid group of friends. So once I finished uni, I just looked for jobs down in Melbourne and then I moved here. What is your height? I've had to say this in some of my fashion hauls and things before because people are like, why are you wearing like a size nine shoe or something? Um, I'm five foot 11, I'm really tall. So fun fact, my mum is literally like five foot. She's super short and my dad is like six foot three. So I just kind of ended up somewhere in the middle of those two. But oh, my mum and my sister are also blonde. So it kind of is quite funny if I'm like out and about at the shops with my mum because she's so petite and blonde and people are like, what? <laughs> so um, if you could live anywhere, where would that be? Well, to be honest, I mean, I did choose to live here for a reason. I love Melbourne. I like the culture. I like the people. I like the fashion. I do not like the weather, but nobody does. Um, but in saying that, at least you get to be close to the snow and that is the next question anyway. Have you ever been to the snow? Yes, but I guess you can't really count Australian snow as like very good snow. If you're watching from like Canada or America or something, you're probably thinking, didn't even know you guys had snow there. We do. We have a couple of mountains. Um, I think Perisha is probably the most famous one that everyone would know about. That's more like in New South Wales, but in Victoria, my favorite one to drive, like Mount Buller is like the closest one. It's like three hour drive away. So you can kind of do it in a day trip. Like I've done it before with a friend. We got up at like 6 a.m., drove there and like, yeah, then skied all day, like get there at about 10 a.m., ski all day, come back to Melbourne about 6 p.m. or something. So it's doable, but the best one in my opinion is Mount Hotham. So if you ever find yourself in Australia and wanting to ski, that's where you go. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Too many. <laughs> like literally so many. I actually just cleared some of them out the other week because it was becoming a bit of a joke. Um, nobody needs that many pairs of shoes, honestly. I think it, I just wanted to try and trim down a lot of my clothes lately. So I've been trying to make like a staple wardrobe. So Obviously the colors, you know, we all kind of have in stuff is like black, nude, white, that kind of thing. So unless something really grabs me now, I won't just randomly buy it for the sake of it. Like it would have to be a really nice pair of shoes or clothes for me to want to invest. Do you like scary movies? Absolutely not. <laughs> like I'll, I'll definitely go and watch them, but I'm going to be that person that's like, <gasps> Like the whole time, like I actually will freak out, jump out of my seat, make a noise or whatever, like be white knuckling kind of thing. Like I am so gullible when it comes to horror films. I'm like, don't go in there. They're going in there. I'm going to have a panic attack. Like if it's a really gory scene, I'll pretty much like close my eyes. Like I'm the worst. I don't know what it is about horror films, but they, <laughs> they're not for me. Last film you watched. Um, oh. That's it. I watched I Care A Lot. I saw this recommendation from so many people and for some reason I thought it was on Netflix, but it's actually on Amazon Prime in Australia. That, uh, I think it was like the Golden Globes winner or something. That's pretty obvious why. That was like such a funny movie and like really good, lots of twists and turns. I don't know, just like super interesting. So if you're feeling very bored and you need to watch a movie, then I definitely recommend that one. Do you catch public transport? Yes, I do. Um, a lot of people in Melbourne actually will catch public transport over like driving or something. A lot of people cycle. We're a very like bike cycling friendly city. Um, but yeah, I catch a train to work, although I've been working from home since March. So I only go into the city like one or two days a week at the moment. But yeah, I just catch a train. It's super easy. I always wanted to be renting somewhere that was like near a train station, just the convenience factor. So 
Yeah, I um, I think it's fine. It's super quick. I'm only like a couple of stations away from the city, so it's super easy. Gives you time to like listen to a podcast or something in the morning as well. What food do you love the most? Mm. That's a hard one because I feel like it changes quite often. Like I don't really have like an all time favorite food. Maybe like homemade pizza or something, but I want to say the kind of food I love the most is like really fresh food. So like a salad like this or fruit salad or like Mexican, like burritos or Guzman or something. So yeah, anything that's like super fresh and tasty. What sport do you like the most? Well, I don't really do sport anymore. And I don't really like watching sport. I'd rather like be playing it or be like actively in it. So I currently do Pilates and I really, really like that. But I also really love boxing. So that's probably my two like favorite forms of like exercise or fitness, but it definitely changes. I used to really like doing hit, but I'm just kind of over it at the moment. Favorite alcoholic drink? Wine. Um, yeah, I really do love a spicy mug, but I really like wine as well. I'm super into wine. So I don't know, probably like a Pinot Noir or a Merlot or something like that. But I also like the experience of wine because I feel like it's a little bit slower. You know what I mean? If you're drinking a cocktail, probably out in the sun, somewhere loud with your friends. But if you're having a wine, it's something that you really like to sit there and try and enjoy and like to really get into the flavors. So probably at wine. Favorite non-alcoholic drink? Mm, I like kombucha, but probably just like literally just soda water with ice and fresh lime. There's honestly nothing better. So, so refreshing. Absolutely delicious. I'd actually drink that over having like a vodka lime soda or something as well. Like if I could literally go back in time and delete all of the vodka lime sodas I've ever drank in my lifetime, I would absolutely do it because they literally taste like shit. <laughs> I feel like vodka lime soda is just what you drink when you bartender says, what do you want? And you just kind of panic. So you just get that default drink. Favorite TV show. At the moment, my favorite TV show is Snowpiercer on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, Go and watch that show. It's so addicting. I'm on to season number two at the moment. So yeah, um, don't give me any spoilers because I actually just want to watch it and see what happens. All right, let's do some juicy questions. I'm ready. When did you screw everything up? <laughs> no one found out it was you. I have the worst story about this. Maybe they did know and they just like pretended that they didn't because I was a kid, but... Anyway, one time I was like staying at my auntie's house and she lives in this beautiful, beautiful home in Sydney. And I think she was away and we were like house sitting or whatever. So we just like went over to feed the dog and do that kind of stuff. And um, anyway, they had been like burgled once before or something. So they had this very intense alarm system um, um, all set up like on the house. Um. anyway, I was like this remote at the front door and it just had a button on it saying, do not press in case of emergency or something like that. So obviously like my eight year old self pressed it. Um, anyway, I had no idea what it was. I just like wanted to know. And it ended up sending like an emergency call out to the security company and set the alarm off on the house. And literally they had to come out, change the locks on the front door. Like they got charged a fee for like the Oh, um, and the security call out. Um, I felt so bad. I didn't want to admit it was me. So I would just kind of like, I just was like, oh, I have no idea what happened. I think the alarm just got set off. And my mom was like, oh, okay. That's so weird. So yeah, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'll pay you back one day, I swear. I just like, don't leave any remote around with a button that says, do not touch this. And a child is there because obviously you're going to touch it. You know what I mean? What is the best purchase you've ever made? This one 
It's super easy, but it's really not relevant at the moment because we can't go anywhere. But the best purchase I have ever made is getting a pack for traveling instead of a suitcase. And I don't know, I feel like so many times when I went overseas on like really big trips and things like that, and I saw people with a pack, I was like, that is ridiculous. How do you fit all of your stuff in there? Doesn't it all just smoosh together and get really disorganized? And I don't know, I just thought it looked really annoying, but I don't, the more you travel, the better you get at packing really lightly. And the more you realize you just don't want to take stuff away with you because you're just going to buy things on the go anyway. Or like, I don't know, you just don't really need to have like a million options for shoes and things like that. So I ended up getting a pack and it was life changing because, you know, when you're like dragging a suitcase over like cobblestones in Europe, like first world problem, I know, but literally you feel like you're about to pull your elbow out of its socket and... The other one is like a, a lot of older places like don't have elevators, of course. So they just have like stairs and you're walking up seven flights of stairs, like dragging your 23 kilo suitcase behind you. And I was just like, mm, no, nah. like the last holiday I went on, I did Yacht Week and that was like 2018, I think. And I went with one of my friends and she had her suitcase and I had my pack and we we're walking around in split, like getting to our accommodation. And I'm just like walking and she was trying to drag her suitcase and I'm like, I told you, I swear to God, get a pack. They are game changers. What is the closest thing to real magic? Mm. I feel like the closest thing to real magic is, it's like a real travel one for me. I think just like sharing a new experience in a new destination with someone. And I don't mean like traveling overseas. I mean, even locally, like on the weekend, I just went away with my partner and we went for a drive and I'd heard that there was this really good beach. So we drove an extra half an hour to go to the beach and I kind of had to twist his arm because he was like, but there's a beach right here. And I'm like, yeah, but I really want to go to that one. And when we got there, it was magic. Like it was this kind of like beachy lagoon bit and it had a bridge going over it and it was the perfect sunny day. And I feel like moments like that are the closest thing to real magic. What is the dumbest way you've been injured? Oh, this is an easy one for me. So one of my front teeth is a like full veneer because when I was like eight years old, I think on Mother's Day of all days, I um, went out on my bike and me and my neighbor used to think we're pretty hardcore. So we were riding down a very, very steep hill in our street and there was a pothole in the road and I hit it and just went straight over the handlebars smacked my face into the road. Yes, I had a helmet on, but it literally pushed the helmet back. Like it wasn't fitting properly or something. And um, it was the most pain I've ever felt in my life. And the most annoyance because that tooth has cost me so much money over the years. And um, it was literally just the stupidest mistake. Um, but anyway, what can you do? I'm very risk averse these days. So <laughs> I would never try anything like that now. Where is the worst smelling place you've ever been? Um, I've actually been to the tanneries in Fez, you know, like the place where they make like the leather handbags and stuff. And it's supposed to be disgusting. Like they actually give you like a bit of mint to put under your nose um, for the smell. But I don't know if it was just the day that like my tour group went there or if I'm just not affected by that kind of stuff, but I actually thought it didn't smell. <laughs> I just thought it was fine. And I know, so many people have like put up reviews or like said absolute horror stories about it. But I used to work on a cattle farm and like a um, trail riding horse place when I was a teenager. And to be honest, when you're like mucking horse poo out of a stall, my smell is pretty bad. And I feel like you just learn to kind of like half block your nose when you're doing it or you just get used to the smell and you just kind of get over it because maybe that's why it just honestly didn't affect me. But I just thought it was nothing. I don't know. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? By the way, I'm like stabbing two blueberries at a time because like I don't have time to just do one. Um, I wanted to be the most random thing. Like, you know, childhood version of yourself always just is like super ambitious about the strangest things. Like 
I think when I was three, I wanted to be a palace guard. Like, you know, the actual guys that wear the big furry hats out the front of Buckingham Palace. I have absolutely no idea why. I think I must have been watching like Matilda or one of those kids shows and seeing them on there. And I was like, hell bent that that was going to be me. And I'm pretty sure that for starters, only men can do that job. And it's probably like a semi-military role. So absolutely not <laughs> on the cards for me. Um, but the other thing I wanted to be was like an eco-tourism guide or something. Like I always felt a really deep connection to like nature and like the rainforest and that kind of thing. So I don't know, something like that, I think. But anyway, I ended up becoming an architect, which is very far from either of those options. So <laughs> who knows what happened there? Have you ever won a trophy or medal? I have the greatest story about this. So when I was younger, I used to like do dancing and play netball and all that kind of stuff. But I watched that Mighty Duck show and I really wanted to play softball or baseball or whatever. And there really wasn't a lot of girls teams around that time. Um, so my mom took me to a club and found me one. And she was like, look, if you really want to do it, but like there's only one girls team. So I don't know how you guys will go in the competition. Um, we won. So in your face, baseball guys, because my team won. Like we were an all girls team. We called ourselves the Mighty Ducks. Some people's mums bought us little ducky toys and we like shoved them through like the wire mesh in the dugout. And I don't know, we were super into it. We had an amazing coach and he just trained us up so well that we actually ended up winning and we got the grand final trophy. And there was this epic photo of my entire little team like holding up this huge trophy and it was just like, who would have thought? So that is a really good story to tell the day after International Women's Day. Girl power. What is the longest word you know? Hmm. I don't know, maybe like juxtaposition or like onomatopoeia or something like that. I don't know, something random. I feel like, does anyone else say like, spell those words out like phonetically when you are trying to say it you know when you're like onomatopoeia <laughs> that's like how i'm hearing it inside of my brain so i don't know if that's just me uh, doing something weird but that's how i hear the words what irritates you the most oh okay people repeating themselves like actually can't handle it or people making me repeat myself like if someone isn't listening when I initially like talk about something or whatever, it makes me so frustrated. And I know that's like an internal thing that I'm doing. Like I'm creating a state of frustration from having to repeat myself, but it grinds my gears so bad. Um, probably like the other thing is maybe just like people who walk really slow and like you're in a rush and I would love to not be in a rush, but like if I'm feeling a little bit disorganized, which again, it's like, that's a me problem, but I'm trying to get somewhere and there's just like a crowd of people like really just having a good time. And I'm like, get out of the way. Like that kind of thing that <laughs> actually grinds me. Uh, have you gone out with mismatched socks or shoes on? I don't know how you could do mismatched shoes because that would just be an absolute no, but uh, don't really wear socks, but definitely always go out with mismatched underwear on. Like, unless I know that I'm going to be seeing my partner and I really want to look good, there is absolutely no coordination going on there in the middle of the week. I'm getting better. I've bought some nice sets of, like, basic underwear and things like that. But, like, I don't know. I just grab whatever's in my drawer. I'm not really, like, yeah, I'm just not one of those girls. <laughs> Hats off to you if you are. Which task or chore is your least favourite? absolutely hanging up clothes like I would pay somebody to hang up my clothes like if I was a millionaire and I had you know help with certain things like that would definitely be one thing that I'd be like please hang up my clothes for me like I hate doing it it's just like my most hated chore um my favorite chore would be vacuuming because it's just so freaking satisfying like you know when you're just like going along and you're like yes get the dust and it's like and it makes that little noise and you're just like mm. <laughs> I don't know I just actually like love vacuuming I don't know if there's any people out there that don't enjoy doing that because I will literally come and vacuum your floor for you if you hang up my clothes okay okay 
Did you ever lock your keys in the car? I have, I'm gonna move this because I'm finished, but I have the worst story about this. So I had a housemate and it just was not a good match of personalities. And I think like these days, like I would definitely handle it more maturely, but we just did not get along. And it was towards the end when like she was gonna be like moving out. And um, I think she'd already moved out maybe. And I was like finding a new tenant to like fill the room. And um, anyway, I was doing my washing and we only have a washing machine and not a dryer. So I like put the washing basket like in my car with like, you know, some coins for like the, the dryer thing and my keys in the basket. And then I shut the boot and that was my car keys and my house keys all in one. And for some reason the car, like I guess once the keys are inside, it's locked and none of the other doors were open. So locked my keys in the car. Thankfully had my phone, which was like shoved in my jeans pocket. So I was like in the basement of the building we lived in and I literally had to like go up to the lobby and like call my housemate that I'd pretty much like had a huge disagreement with and then she'd moved out and be like, hey, um, if you wouldn't mind like coming around and like letting me in, like that would be so great. Like no rush, like whenever it suits you today. And I'm just like, <sighs> like sitting in the lobby, but like props to her. She came around like within half an hour and was really good about it. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's one of those things. Hey, you just need to just get over it. Like if you don't like get along with someone and you have to be living with them. It's fine. Like we're all such different people. And if you're just like not a good match for someone, no need to, you know, hold on to bad blood or anything like that. So I uh, was very lucky that she was kind enough to turn up and let me in because that was so friggin' annoying. And I've almost done it a few times since then as well. So I tried to like take my car key off my house keys. So I've at least got one or the other. Um, but yeah, don't do that. Cause it wasn't very fun. Have you ever gone into a room and forgotten why? All the time. I have the worst memory. I literally describe my memory as like little goldfish just doing like three second laps in a bowl. Like I absolutely cannot remember stuff. Like I've got an incredible long-term memory, but my short-term memory is shocking. Like I would literally go to do something and be like, I have no idea where my keys are. Why am I here? I don't know what's going on. Like even with my boss at work and I'm like, very dedicated to like doing a good job, but I need to keep to-do lists. If something is not on a to-do list, I literally will not remember it. I don't know if that is just like a coping mechanism that I've like given myself over the years and now I'm too reliant on it, but I, yeah, I have a shocking, shocking memory. So that's probably like my worst quality. Which time period would you like to visit in history? Um, I don't know if like everybody else, you guys have watched Bridgerton. If you haven't, go and watch it right now. So binge worthy, um, the Duke, say no more. But I would like go back to like that kind of time. Cause I just feel like, I don't know. It would just be so interesting. Cause it's so, so different. Like away from all of the technology and things like that, that we've got, I guess it's saying I have to go back in time. So if I could, I would just like go to the future. But the question was which period in history. So. Yeah, something like that, like the 1800s or something like that. Okay, last question. Where would you like to be in five years time? Um, ideally, I would love for this channel to keep growing and I would love to build my dream home or renovate a place and like take you guys along for the entire journey of like styling it and finding it and like doing renovations and things like that. I would love to be married to my partner and maybe have a kid, so. I don't know, there's like so many of those life goals that I really wasn't in a rush to tick off. Like I'm really not the kind of person that is in it for like a box ticking exercise. I just think, you know, yes, we only get one life, but you really just want to live it in the most organic way possible. And I think that's like, honestly, when the best things happen is like when we're not forcing it along the way, like you just kind of want to lean into life, say yes to new experiences and just kind of see where it takes you. So. That is that. Thank you guys so much for watching and watching me eat, even though it was a little bit messy because it was a bit of a salad. I was kind of regretting that halfway through. But anyway, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.